Here is our Sunlight T69L from Savonia Caravan, so let's go explore Finland. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Well, good morning from our campground here in Helsinki, Finland. Before we leave towards the Lapland, some housekeeping is in order here. More specifically, dumping the cassette toilet. And excuse my clumsiness, but it's only my second time doing it. Off I go to the dump station. I promise I'll show you how it's done before the trip is over. Let's head over to the grey water dump station first, which is basically a hole on the ground. Okay, this is how you dump the grey water. And this is how you fill up the water. The fresh water. Then turn left onto the ramp to Vuosar and Keskusta. Did you get that? Mm, neither did I. The GPS lady is obviously talking to me in English, but the street names are in Suomi, and this language, at least for English speakers, is very hard to understand. Turn left onto the ramp to Vuosar and Keskusta, then merge onto Norvegian. I still have a map on my phone to glance at, and I'm actually more comfortable sometimes at following that than listening to the verbal commands. I'm more of a visual kind of guy. But actually, this is one of the most alluring aspects of traveling overseas, you know, trying to figure out how to navigate in a different language, different rules, different customs. It is fascinating. Look how many street lamps they have over the highway. I guess to bring light to the long, cold winter nights, perhaps? I'm just guessing here. Check out this tunnel, how cool it looks inside with just a bare rock exposed. As we'll soon find out, a lot of tunnels in this area of the world are like that. Always very well lit, though. On this very first leg of the trip, we're just driving a little over half an hour to the nearby town of Porvo. I'm just getting used to driving the Ducato here. I haven't driven stick shift in over 10 years, but apparently it's just like riding a bicycle. You never really forget it. Well, this is it. Porvo. As we cross the Porvo Jockey here, now let's try and find parking. This looks promising, I see a big P. Let's see where that leads. Yep, I'll take it. I think this will be fine. Here we are, Porvo. Let's explore a little bit. Uh, Macchiato. Now this place, very nice, and our house is right there. Porvo, by the way, is the second oldest town in Finland, founded in 1380. Let's walk towards the old town. Cool, check it out, an old Citroën truck. Many of the houses here in Old Town date back to the 18th and 19th centuries. And it is a real town, not just for tourists. People actually live here. This here is one of the main streets, very touristy, with all kinds of boutiques and cafes, a museum. Here we have a house, sideways, 
and the building that used to be the city hall, nowadays the city museum. And here is the river. We continue walking. We're going to walk on this road here, uphill, to reach the cathedral. Very old cobblestones. Uh, a little disoriented here. Here we are, almost at the top. This here is the Kirkotori, or Church Square. It's a small cathedral here. Yeah, it doesn't have that grandiose image that you associate with other cathedrals, uh, but let's check it out anyways, it is supposed to be the top thing to do here in Porvo. It is one of the oldest and largest cathedrals in the whole country. Some parts actually date back to the 11th century, and we get a little bit of a view of the river from up here. Lucky for us, they're gonna have an organ concert and it's going to begin here in a few minutes. Uh, we might not be able to stay for the whole thing, but how timely is that for us, huh? The building itself has been through a lot over the years. It was originally a Catholic church. Then during the Reformation, they just removed some icons, painted over some murals and voila, now we are Protestant. It burned to the ground four times between 1300 and 1700. It was even hit by a bomb during World War I. And the roof, someone set it on fire again in 2006. So after all that, I wonder what's really left from the 11th century, but if they say so, it must be true. The Oregon concert is definitely one of those things that are very hard to plan and you are grateful when they happen serendipitously like this. Well, let's continue exploring a little bit here on our way back to the RV going through the narrow cobblestone streets. Very cool town, we liked it, would have loved to stay longer. And we are, as usual, a little pressed for time. We are meeting up with a viewer for lunch and then with our friend Piteri for dinner. Our coffee shop and... We have to name our European uh, RV. Off we go to Vitali's house. Continue for two kilometers. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. Vitali and his mom Valentina are viewers of the channel and very graciously invited us to lunch at their home here. Well, here we are at Vitali's house and uh, well, I want to thank him first of all for the hospitality of inviting me here to his home. Thank you for it's coming. It's a very forward. beautiful home here, Vitali. My great pleasure and I look forward to see you again here. <laughs> well, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll return and it has uh, his mom yeah. over there. <laughs> And uh, right. we've been uh, watching travel videos, and he fed me, and <laughs> and well, I want to thank him. Now, we, now we go. We continue the journey. And I have the energy to go all these uh, thousands of thousands of yes. miles that you have ahead of you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, well, you. thank you, Robert. They have a beautiful home, beautifully decorated, and Vitali is working on a very innovative startup called DeskMe.com. Well, till we meet again. All right, thank you for 
Yeah, Vitalis Company is really cool. You can reserve a desk in an office space by clicking on this 3D office map. Looks very cool. And he explained the technology behind it. And it is actually a very good idea for travelers because sometimes you need a comfortable space to work with good internet while on the road. Speaking of the road, we are on it again, on our way to the town of Varkaus, where our host, friend Epiteri, well, that's where he lives and we're gonna hang out tonight. I just noticed one thing, in the USA all the semi-trucks have a big nose in the front where the engine is, and here they're all flat in the front. That's a curious difference in design, I think. Here in Finland, I've seen lots of cars towing these small trailers with a plastic cover. I wonder what the deal is with those. And it seems like the weather is improving, thankfully. Yeah, let's follow that RV. We're probably going to the same place. In 600 meters, turn right onto Puslantai. Continue on Puslantai for two kilometers. Our campground here is located at the Contoranta Hotel and Spa, on the shores of Lake Komiselka very close to Piteri's home and downtown Varkaus. And uh, here we are, let's go and check in. Here's a trail, very nice and overall a very quiet and peaceful place here. And there's nice houses on the other side of the lake. Yeah, that's part of residential Varkaus. I am fascinated by the clouds at these latitudes. They seem different somehow. And don't be fooled by the daylight. It is 8 p.m. here in early June, and that's the Oscar, where we are going to have dinner tonight. But first, uh, Pitery and his wife give us a quick tour of their hometown. Although, this was one of those instances when I was more in the moment and didn't really shoot a whole lot of video. We did take some pictures at the Oscar with Peter, his wife Annie, and his friend and partner Tommy. Ilya and I had a great time sharing with them, getting to know each other. And one of the best hamburgers I've ever had, all the way here in Finland. Once again, I want to thank Peter for inviting us to his great country. By the way, it is like 11 p.m. Hello everybody and greetings from the Contoranta campground here in, in Varkaus, Finland. Well, here we have the, the Finnish staple, which is the sauna. And uh, let me see if I can show you how it works. It's locked right now, but what you do, after getting out of the sauna, you come running down this path towards the lake. And here you jump into the freezing cold water and uh, then you come out, go back to the sauna, 
and repeat. Let's go into the main office to find out where the dump station is located. Hmm, they're singing in here. And there seems to be an Irish pub. Hmm, too bad we're leaving. There is an indoor pool with a slide, a soccer field, and beautiful views of the lake. And there's a beautiful view of our camper, which we have christened Savonia. And now, time for the daily chore of emptying the cassette toilet. And that's where you deposit, you know, the stuff. Uh, looks like I missed the spot by just an inch or so. We continue towards the Lapland. Out the family of little ducklings crossing the street. Very, very cute. Let's fill up with diesel. We found this place where you can get propane. And now we're looking for a supermarket, preferably one with an alco next to it. Whoa, that's a lot of syllables. We're going to this supermarket here called the Little, uh, but uh, if we're going to park on the street, we're going the wrong way. Okay, much better, this will do. We've got an Alco and a Little. What else could we possibly ask for? Let's get our cart. By the way, in order to get a shopping cart, you have to deposit a euro or some other coin to release it. And then you get your euro back when you return the cart. Well, now that we have enough provisions to survive a week in the tundra, not really, the journey continues. But before that, let's go for a quick cruise around Varkaus here. Yeah, we drove around here last night, if you can call that twilight night, uh, with Piteri, but I wanted to see it again. See, another one of those trailers with the plastic top? They seem to be very popular. There are all these multicolored flowers on the side of the road. Uh, maybe I'll get a better shot further north. As it usually is uh, more the norm than the exception. We are again <laughs> uh, behind schedule here going north uh, towards Rovaniemi in the Lapland region of uh, Finland. And you know, we're late, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna see as much as we can. And uh, the good thing is that it doesn't, it doesn't get dark until really late, so I'm gonna drive and drive. There's this city called, called uh, Oulu, and there's another place after that. Should be fun. Yeah, check out all these flowers on the side of the road. It kind of reminds me of the fireweed in Alaska. We are going to stop at the next city here called Kuopio and try to get an inverteri, which is how you say inverter in Suomi, because it looks like we're going to be boondocking a lot and we need to charge our devices using the house battery. And here we are, Ili, my navigator, found this store called Motonet. 
They sell all kinds of automotive stuff, including inverters. We're going to try and get an inverter here at Motonet. Uh, Motonet and bought an inverter, so now we've got power. And I got me an energy drink, just, you know, for an emergency. Even though Savonia here doesn't have solar panels or generator, uh, we're going to be driving daily so it should stay pretty well charged throughout the trip, even charging the phones, the computer and the cameras nightly. Oh, by the way, up here it may not look like it, but we are at the same latitude as Denali National Park in Alaska, uh, or Iceland more or less, the same, the same latitude uh, in the world, so we're getting really, really up there uh, to the north. Even though we are inching closer and closer to the Arctic Circle, it doesn't feel very remote at all. There are small towns and services every few kilometers, although I suspect they will become further and further apart the northern we get. We change direction here at Isalmi and I'm getting tired. Okay, let's take a break. Um, we're gonna take a break here. I do believe that in all these uh, parking areas on the side of the road, you're allowed to overnight, you know, boondock. If, if you really have to, nobody is going to uh, bother you. They have a law here called uh, every man's right or something like that. So, so basically, as long as you don't bother uh, the the property or the environment or what have you. I don't know exactly how it works. You are allowed uh, to stay. And that's what I might do tonight uh, later on. By the way, it's getting really chilly. Out here it's like six degrees far, um, Celsius. Yeah, I'm getting used to Celsius. I'm getting used to kilometers. Uh, as, you, as you saw, I'm, I'm, I got my groove back on a driving stick shift. Uh, so um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's been so far a very nice trip and the trip is just getting started. Uh, we're we're going to stop now at this time at this town called uh, Oulu. I think it's right on the on the on the coast, very close to Sweden actually. Beautiful countryside here in in um, in Finland and uh, well, we'll continue on the road. Check out Lots of truck at this time by the way. It it, it is like 9 p.m. or something like that. In my original plan, we were going to make it all the way to Rovaniemi today by the Arctic Circle. <laughs> How funny am I? We'll be lucky if we make it to Oulu. But hey, that's why we don't really make reservations or have rigid plans, because they always change. This particularly straight and wide stretch of highway here is the Rotimojoki Highway Strip, designed to serve as an auxiliary runway for military aircraft. It is like the eternal twilight, the sun that never sets. It is 10 p.m., one more hour to go. Uh, we'll call it a night. Black night. Mmm, 
RV dealer perhaps? And now it looks like they are repaving the road. I'm too tired for this. You see, I almost missed my exit. Here we are, Oulu. And we found this boondocking spot using an app, it is called Motorhome Parkings, and it links to the Camper Contact website. It is by no means complete, but it lists some motorhome parkings like this one where we're staying at tonight, also regular campsites and service areas which are basically places to empty the grey water, the chemical toilet and to get fresh water. This one here is just a free parking lot at this marina just one kilometer from downtown. Most of the reviews are in other languages, but there is a translate button. Handy. Well, I really think uh, we hit the jackpot here. This is our moon docking spot for the night here in Oulu, Finland. It is 11.30 p.m. And yes, <laughs> It's still light out. I think sunset is supposed to be at midnight. We have some neighbors, but you know, everybody's very quiet. Six degrees Celsius here in Oulu, Finland. Well, we're gonna go to sleep and uh, well, we'll continue on the road tomorrow. I think I've earned my IPA from Isalmi. We passed by there today. Well, good morning. You know, it's a rainy morning here in Oulu. Look, okay, now it is breakfast time and we're gonna make some breakfast. Oh, here on our, on our sunlight. Some scrambled eggs because it's all we have. Oh, by the way, got some instant coffee. Finish eggs. You know, they're hard. Finlandia cheese. And let's eat. While we're here, Let's go by downtown real quick, although with this weather I don't think we're going to be able to do much. There's a big parking lot, but no, let's just park on the street. here in downtown Oulu. It is raining, very, very bad weather today. But I want to show you something here in downtown Oulu. By the way, this probably gets very nice, uh, you know, a happening place later in the day. A lot of um, outdoor cafes here in the summer. Unfortunately, the weather is not cooperating today. But uh, this is a very famous statue here of this uh, police officer. And we're just gonna Check it out and then back to the RV because the camera is getting wet. Right here in Oulu. Yeah, I think we're going to explore Oulu on the way back. Let's continue. The Arctic Circle awaits. That's an interesting way of driving, I guess. People treat the road as if there was a third lane in the middle. Seems kind of dangerous under these weather conditions. 
You see, that's a practice I had never seen before and apparently it is widespread here because everybody seems to be doing it. And this is the thing, there is a law here that semi-trucks are limited to 80 km per hour, which in my opinion is ridiculously slow but they must have a reason for that, right? Then RVs are limited to 100. Now, in many places, the speed limit can be as high as 120, so it's natural that passenger cars will want to pass you, so yeah, makes total sense. Different countries, different rules, but that's why we travel, right? wonder what's going on. Apparently the road is closed. Hello. Hey. Rovaniemi, is there another route? Uh, you have to go to... Where are you going? Rovaniemi. Rovaniemi. You can drive to Tornio and that way. Tornio? First Tornio and then to Boyakala and then to Rovaniemi. Okay. Yes. Tornio. Okay, thank you. Yes. The GPS doesn't know how to handle this, doesn't show any alternate routes, and I totally forgot what she said after Tornio, so we'll take it one intersection at a time. Oh, the road to Roman, Rovaniemi is closed, so we have to seek an alternate route, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what the police officer told me, so I forgot the name of one of the cities. Turn so. left onto Rexfrigen, Vault AT. We'll make it there, someday. The good news is that it stopped raining. Darn, I spoke too soon. And it is like slit, I guess? I've never seen slit before, but it certainly fits the description. Blue skies, sort of. And rain again. And ten minutes later, beautiful weather. I'm telling you, the weather is kind of crazy up here. You can see it change before your very eyes. It's surreal. We are getting close to Rovaniemi, home of Santa Claus and the Arctic Circle. Yay, it is great to be here, but first things first. The red light on the cassette toilet has turned on again. And it is a nasty job, but someone's gotta do it. Maybe we're doing it wrong, but it's like a daily thing for us. And at this location, it's just a manhole on the ground. It's that new. It has to be! It certainly doesn't look like rain. Maybe it is lit, but since we've never seen it before... In any case, it is very emotional for us to see this <laughs> type of precipitation. Let's go see Santa Claus. Here we are. And uh, we're parked exactly... at the Arctic Circle. According to legend, Santa was actually born in Korvatunturi, but apparently it is too out of the way by the Russian border, so they decided to make the tourist attraction here. We are straddling the Arctic Circle. Of course, uh, this line uh, changes constantly because the Earth is in, in constant uh, change, but uh, it will be a real pain in the butt to, to change the line every, every year. So. Of course, they are playing Christmas music non-stop. Santa is here. They have a place where you can take a picture with Santa, but you have to pay, so we decided against it. 
Here's the restaurant where we wanted to eat, but it is closed. Apparently we are too early in the season, here on the 7th of June. We'll open again in July. Let's step one more time over the Arctic Circle. Okay, now we are above the Arctic Circle. Well, let's see if we can get something to eat here. I got the sauté reindeer and Ely got the salmon soup. Well, here we are straddling the Arctic Circle and besides this, let me tell you, this was a little bit of a fail because uh, the restaurant that I wanted to eat at is actually cl still closed uh, for the season. Uh, but anyways, I, I was able to, to mail some uh, postcards and uh, see the Arctic Circle and from here we continue north. So uh, let's see, let's see where, where we end up. Hopefully we'll make it to Nord Cap, which is the northernmost place in the world where you can, that you can drive to actually. We still have 680 kilometers to go. We're going back to Rovaniemi here real quick. A few kilometers south. There are a bunch of attractions and museums in town, but the real reason we're here is... We forgot to buy some necessities, some groceries, namely water. Uh, we've been to K-Market and Little so now let's try Prisma. Prisma. Well, this place is huge. Pretty overwhelming. They have a whole aisle devoted to ice cream. Yeah, I think from now on we're going to stick to smaller supermarkets, if we can find them. A little discombobulated, but I'm sure they understand that where everything is. It's just uh, strange. And there's potatoes, and more potatoes, and more potatoes. It's a whole aisle of frozen potatoes. Well, that was certainly an experience and uh, one of the reasons why we traveled, probably. Um, it, to, to us, it felt like a mess in there, but I'm sure they understand everything. It's just, uh, it's just different. Well, at least we won't starve. We got some food. Well, as you can see, we have all the essentials. And we have food, too. Oh, these are really good. Well, I'm sure the Finnish people would find Walmart as puzzling as I found this uh, Prisma uh, mega store, mega market. Anyways, let's continue towards the north, as far north as we can drive. It's been very hard to find still, you know, non-carbonated mineral water here in Finland. It almost seems like all they drink here is carbonated and the language barrier doesn't help. We cross the Arctic Circle again and uh, here's another arch with the sign for the people coming south let's go this way i've seen pictures of a hotel with glass igloos but i guess we're here at the wrong time of the year for that it is supposed to be really cool uh, particularly in the winter because you can see the northern lights The Arctic Circle here is the southernmost point in the world where the midnight sun is possible and that'll happen here on the summer solstice. Now the further we travel north, the longer that window of opportunity becomes. For example, at the North Cape, where we're going, the sun does not set for 76 days, from May 14th through July 29th. And here we definitely have another highway strip. You know, a section of the highway that can be used as a runway, like an airport, if needed. We start encountering some rolling hills and lots of RVs in this area. 
Ooh, souvenirs. Let's stop real quick. Yeah, they have a lot of cool stuff here. From the Sami, the indigenous culture of the Lapland. We got a magnet and a sticker to put in the back of Minitini. Okay, let's park here, take another break and fly a little. Great views of the Lapland from this bird's eye perspective. I'm actually quite surprised. Way up here in the middle of the Lapland, you can find towns like this one so well developed. Here's a cafe and I could use some coffee right now, but it is, of course, closed. Everything is closed. It may not look like it, but it's like 8.30 p.m. We continue pushing through, but I think we're gonna call it a night and boondock around here. There is a free campsite here to the left. And isn't this nice? And we found it with this other app called Park for Night. It's really cool, with different icons representing different types of location. This one is in the Surrounded by Nature category. Well, yeah, we have found the perfect boondocking spot here. Well, we gotta find the perfect shot, right? We're celebrating our first midnight sun with a bottle of cava because champagne is too expensive. Salud! Well, it was technically not our first midnight sun of the trip. The sun actually set last night for a little bit. We're still about two weeks away from the summer solstice here, and I guess we're still not at a latitude high enough where the sun stays above the horizon this early in the year.
Unfortunately, the weather is deteriorating and the forecast does not look promising. There are a bunch of places in this area on the side of the road selling souvenirs. Our next stop is Inari, where we are going to have lunch, or almost dinner. But before that, we need to make our daily cassette toilet dump and get some Vesi, which is Finnish for water. And it is complicated sometimes because almost every single place is different. Let's park here and find out how it works at this particular station. There, Vesi and Ilma, water and air. I'm telling you, I'm getting the hang of it. Give me a couple of months and I'll be fluent in Swami. Well, maybe not. We take a quick detour to see the Urho Kekonen National Park. But this is not something you just pass by and see it. Uh, to truly enjoy it, you need to do some hikes and spend some time. There are many, many lakes here as we are approaching finally Inari. As eager as we are to get there and eat, sometimes you gotta stop and take a break, smell the lake, enjoy the precipitation. It is like tiny little hail, I think. Oh, what do you know, it is snowing in the Lapland. And here we are, finally, in Ari, and we had great plans for this town. It is one of the main places to experience the Sami culture, but we're just gonna have time to eat. We're here, let's have lunch. Nice to have a motorized RV. We're going to eat here at the Inari Hotel, at the restaurant. Beautiful view from our restaurant table here. Mm -hmm. We're having a local dark lager from <laughs> Rovaniemi. And he's having Happy Joe cider. Reindeer soup and mushroom soup with a view. These people on the boat getting ready to leave. That would be nice to take a cruise on the lake. Off they go. It looks like salmon, but it's actually trout. And the reindeer fillet. Delicious. Let's eat. Before we continue, I have to pass by the posti to send a postcard. <laughs> continue, Norway awaits. Hey, Norwegian flag there, we must be getting close. Well, this is actually the junction with Route 92, which goes into Norway. It is a pretty fun drive on these hills here. Up and down we go.
And here we are at the Norwegian border. Of course, there is no checkpoint, you just drive through. I was really hoping for a large sign welcoming us to Norway, but this is all we've got. On the next episode, the landscape becomes of increasingly striking beauty as we continue driving north, basically until the end of the road. My videos are made possible in part by the support of viewers like you, so do me a favor, if you liked it, share it with your friends, spread the word. And for more options, go to travelingrobert.com slash support. As always, thank you so much, and see you on the road.